Well, that's, uh, that's one way to instant pot a man. What's up, sexy? I'm Lexi, and welcome back to Lexplanations, where we use memes to explain things. Have you ever found a bloated battery in your house, also known as a spicy pillow, and wondered just what you were supposed to do with it? Well, you've come to the right place. Welcome to the Spicy Pillow Special. What? This is a Capri Sun. Parents sent me this and asked if they could throw it away. Ho 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 ho! You know it's bad when you can barely tell what the original device actually even was? Like, I think that was a tablet, but for all I know, this could just be Satan's Hot Pocket. New lithium flavor, delicious! To answer your parents' question, how much do they hate sanitation workers? Because this right here is what happens when you throw away a lithium battery and become somebody else's bang biscuit. We'll go over proper recycling and disposal later in this video, but I think the first thing we can learn in today's video is don't, don't just throw these away. Scooter gets too spicy. Holy hell! There's one of those in my garage. I'll be right back. Please don't burn down the house. 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 Don't you even think about it. As an unimportant tech comedy YouTuber, I feel it is important for me to diagnose some issues in real time, just to make sure that my content is not only entertaining, but also educational. So we'll start with this device. If you look closely, you'll notice signs of a critical error known as being on fire. This issue can cause data loss, device malfunctioning, and even affect the number of hands the user still has. This usually happens when a device experiences more ambition than usual and goes from a boring bang biscuit to a puff pastry to a juicy lithium tart. Hope you're hungry. If I just hammer this down, will it flatten? Let's find out. Actually, let's not. Uh, when you have a laptop with a PAL packet as big as this, usually it's because there's a gas that is accumulated in there that is toxic and is out to make sure you have a very bad day. You ever wondered what it was like to be poisoned and on fire at the same time? That's that's weird, please get help. Touchpad is not supposed to look like this, is it? <laughs> no, I type really aggressively, so all I can think of is me going da 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 spacebar. Well, I guess I'm left-handed now. Spicy MacBook Air is still working. Yeah, still working for Satan. You know, when I was in New York City, one of the scariest things about living in an apartment building is knowing that just across the other side of the wall, like, your neighbor could be typing on one of these demon blisters and you'd have no idea until the entire building had gone up. Do you live in an apartment building? Oh, sorry about that. Lexplanations, causing crippling anxiety since 2023. Pull the spicy pillow out of a very old device. These. I want to do an episode on PDAs one day, but oh my god, some of them are expensive on eBay. So if anybody has access to like a giant collection of PDAs, let me know in the comments. Anyways, rant over. One spicy bag. Filthy as well. Despite the fact that McDonald's is charging out the butt for literally everything these days, I, I would for one would buy a flaming hot Big Mac. But if they served me this, I would run out of the restaurant screaming. Look, if you open your laptop and its diaper is that full, you could try just leaving it outside a monastery. Maybe they'll take- actually, don't do that to a monastery. They don't deserve that. Don't bother changing it. Just- just throw the whole thing out. This PSP I found while cleaning up. My- <gasps> Okay, I'll give you props on the creativity for the masking tape desperately trying to keep the battery down as it ascends to fulfill its dreams of becoming an electric s'more, but- but you gotta let it go, man. If you truly love something, put it outside, preferably in a fireproof box. So smart. I'm so smart, I managed to charge a puff bar. Are E6 called puff bars now? Oh, uh, good lord. Get your stupid marshmallow cigarette out of here. Don't try to charge a puff bar, mother <laughs> This is a brand new $700 mattress. <laughs> <laughs> You don't say. I feel like my audience is smart enough to not do this, but I feel like I, I needed to at least present the post to remind everyone not to do this. Both attempting to build a battery charging circuit and doing any sort of electronics on your bed. It, it won't go well even if you know what you're doing. Just Murphy's Law. Poor iPod Nano. It can be really sad to find an electronic that you may have put tons of music on and spent hours with that you've left in a kitchen drawer for just a little bit too long and it's turned into a nuclear nugget. Unfortunately, Unless you are extremely experienced, the best plan of action is simply to recycle it. You can repair them very carefully, but if you bring something like that into a tech shop, they will probably usher you straight out the door. Please don't bring anything like this into a repair shop. My son, my laptop keeps wobbling. Aw, that's cute. Your son made himself a wobbly grin. I can't say that word. Granada? Grenadine. Angry tiny pineapple. Okay, we good? Okay, we good. 
But yeah, if you notice your laptop wobbling, stop using it. Spicy iPhone. If your jewel jelly baby has expanded to the point where it's cracked the back of the phone, yeet! Please make plans to recycle it immediately and keep it outside. I, I really hope this person isn't still using it. My dad's laptop. I have tried to warn him, but he says he'll get a new one when this one stops working. The nice thing about this kind of mentality is you can kind of do it all at once. You know, you can replace your laptop, your phone, all of your clothes, your house, because everything's burned down. Yay! This is efficiency taken to a whole new extreme. I, I will give props to whoever made this keyboard i think it's hp because it has those stupid rounded corners but the fact that the keyboard is bent this much and he says it's still working that, that's impressive i'll give you that that's the only thing i'll give you but i'll give you that double spicy pillows ah so you you have a full set for like a, a full-size bed or, or a full-size coffin we get the two for one specials in that boys found this in my dad's spare parts bin at work safely disposed of <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. I like having 10 fingers, thank you very much. These are the kind of videos you watch with your eyes like half closed just in case. That tiny primal corner of your brain going, it's not safe, it's not safe. But I think this is an excellent time to talk about how to safely dispose of these. Take it away, me. All right, all right, hang on. Uh, which button was it? Uh, this one. Batteries are chemical cakes. Well, actually, they're more like fruit roll-ups. Only instead of flavors like strawberry, berry, tie-dye, and color by the foot. No, no, seriously, that's that's what it's called. You get metals like nickel, cobalt, and lithium. Smash all these together and what do you get? A sh <clears throat> sorry, a power sandwich. Lexi, I have double A batteries that have been in my TV room up for like years and they haven't exploded. Why can't we just use those batteries and everything? Thank you, random commenter from the future. Please get out of my house. Uh... Oh, and the answer to your question is discharge rates. Batteries are like bottles of water. No matter how much water is in the bottle, you can only get water out of the bottle as fast as the opening allows. That opening defines the discharge rate of the bottle. For batteries, the capacity, or how big our water bottle would be, is measured in milliamp hours. The discharge rate is the capacity, how big the battery is, divided by how long it takes to empty the battery. Now math can be very pretty and also completely meaningless if we don't give an actual example. So, so let's let's start with a double A battery. Alkaline double A batteries usually have a capacity of 1,700 to 2,850 milliamp hours. The discharge rate, or how fast you can get all that power out of a double A battery, is usually between 0.5 and 0.75, but can be up to 1.0. Now, let's imagine you have the latest Lexi Station Portable. Objectively, the best game console in existence. For this example, we're going to say it runs off a single battery, which would make that regular old alkaline battery just fine to use, right? Well, the Lexi Station Portable is a needy pain in the astronomer, and it needs to suck down two amps of power in order to mine Lexi- I'm, I'm sorry, run its groundbreaking game technology. But what's this? A lithium battery? That's right, an Energizer Lithium AA battery has the same capacity as an alkaline AA battery, but can hand deliver a whopping 2.8 amps. Going back to our bottle analogy, that's like cutting the top off the bottle and dumping all the water out at once. So, now we know these kind of batteries are useful because they can release a lot of power more quickly, but why do they get puffy and start fires and explode? It all comes down to heat. Yeah, electronics don't like heat. Imagine that. Heat generated by charging and discharging the battery, as well as from environmental sources, like being left in a hot car, caused the thin layer between the two sheets of the battery, called the electrolyte, to break down, releasing some very nasty farts. Meet hydrogen fluoride. He's flammable. He's toxic. And the state of New Jersey has an entire safety document on why he's bad. If it seems like I'm trying to cancel them, I am. If a battery is, uh, I don't know, hit by a hammer or something, sparks between the layers of the battery can set off Mr. Hydrogen Fluoride. And your day is about to contain 100% more fire than you planned for. But wait, there's more! Hydrogen Fluoride can also irritate the lungs, damage the liver and kidneys, and cause fluoride poisoning with stomach pain, weakness, convulsions, collapse, and, uh, and death, presumably in that order, but you, you never know. By the way, for any flat earth granola people out there, these health effects do not occur at, at the level of fluoride used in water for preventing cavities in teeth. I feel like most of my audience is smart enough to know that, but there's always that one guy. Lexi, these things sound like kind of dangerous. Are they safe? Oh, they are 100% safe-ish, probably. Look, there's a reason airlines have a limit on the size of the battery that can be inside the laptop that you bring on board. Also, I was really proud of this sticker, so I threw it up on our merch store. Link in the description. Now, 
Now, if you've started to nervously look around your home, thinking of all the tiny little boom buddies just waiting to explode around you, first off, please remember, most well-manufactured batteries are not going to spontaneously combust on you, especially if you don't charge them or heat them up. But if you do have some old electronics lying around that do have these batteries in them, and you don't need them anymore, it's, it's always a good idea to recycle them. As always, remember to wipe them of any personal data, unless it's a new 2DS XL, preferably the purple one, in which case I will buy it off of you. Call to Recycle is a website that's actually mentioned in the r slash spicy pillow subreddit and this tool can help you find a nearby drop-off location for undamaged unswollen batteries they aren't sponsoring this video or anything i just thought it was a good resource i typed in new york just for the fun of it and pulled up a whole bunch of listings now if your battery is bloated damaged etc what you can do is call the recycling centers pulled up by call to recycle and see if they do accept damaged or bloated batteries some of them do and they have proper methods of disposing of them if that doesn't work you can call your local household hazardous waste or HHW Recycling Center. Cities, towns, and municipalities will sometimes have one of these. Sometimes they'll do a pickup service. Sometimes you drive it to them. Uh, sometimes they do an event, and they'll handle stuff like uh, latex paint, flammable chemicals and polishes, and uh, all sorts of stuff like that. If neither of these options are available, and you have a battery you're particularly concerned about, Call to Recycle does sell shippable battery recycling kits, but they are not cheap. If all three of these options haven't worked for you, you can put it in a reasonably fireproof container. Think like a cinder block on a concrete pad with uh, some sand or kitty litter until you can figure out a safe disposal method. Don't puncture the battery. Don't charge the battery. Don't heat up the battery. And for the love of God, don't microwave. Why is that even a thing? Why do I have to say that? Don't microwave batteries. Always remember rule zero. Do not be on fire. Free mini keyboard spicy pillow. Wait, hang on. Hang on, I gotta check something. Please don't have become an overflowing watt wallet. I really need this thing. Okay, we're good, I think. Apparently I have like the next model of that keyboard uh, because the buttons are slightly different and the battery is a different color. Uh, seems to be fine. But this is also something I charge, I don't know, like every three weeks or so. I try to never let it run into empty. I try not to keep it at full. And for those of you wondering, it's a it's a mini keyboard with a trackpad mouse. I use it whenever I need like a quick plug-in keyboard to interface with a computer somewhere. But yeah, this, this raises an interesting point because uh, there's a number of these devices mice, keyboards, things like that, that could totally run off alkaline batteries. The advantage of lithium-ion batteries is that they can discharge extremely quickly, so you can have things like electric bikes and scooters and laptops that require a, a ton of power all at once, which alkaline and nickel metal hydroxide batteries simply can't provide. They just can't get the power out of the battery quick enough. But when you have something like this that doesn't require that power draw, in fact, I had an earlier model of this where you could just put triple A's in the back. It really does raise the question of, of why lithium ion batteries are used in the first place. One of the reasons the Xbox controller and the Steam controller are two of my favorite controllers is that they use AA batteries, which means that if I forget about them for five, 10 years, Yes, they might leak a little and I might have to clean off the contacts, but I will still be able to get AA batteries and they will still work. My PS4 controller? Battery's dead in it. I mean, PlayStation controllers have the battery life of salmon at a sushi restaurant, but to repair it, I have to rip it apart, which I'm just not gonna do, I just don't have the time. And also I have to make sure that I can still get that exact battery, not because of the voltage or whatever, but because of the size, like it has to fit in the spot that's designed for it. Where am I going with this? Manufacturers, Please use triple A's and double A's where possible. I love the previous version of this where you could use both or maybe go the Xbox route where you have a pack that slots into some, you know, double A slots. So when the pack goes bad, you can just replace it and shove in some regular alkalines. Are any manufacturers gonna listen to me? Of course not, because planned obsolescence isn't the future great. And that concludes this episode of Lexplanations. Remember, do not poke the power sponge. Do not open the envelope of death. Do not behold the bag of bad day. Subscribe if you want to see the upcoming Lexi Guide to Being Blind. Have an absolutely victorious day tomorrow. Stay safe, stay awesome, make more stuff, and I will see you guys in the next video.